This is the main dashboard for the SA app. You can see it's in beta and I'm actually three days into the 14 day free trial. You can pay on a monthly plan, $6 a month, a yearly plan, $48 a month, or a lifetime access, $249. The question I have though is, is it worth it as an Obsidian user? In this dashboard view, you can see all of the essays or essentially files that you've created inside of the essay account. And you've got the tutorial, learn to use essay, and then this one, which we're going to go to in a minute. But if you go to the top right, you can see we've got the account. I'm in the dashboard. There is the essay writing guide, and this is the ride written by Jordan Peterson a while ago. And this is where you can easily access it to understand the philosophy behind this tool. And then you have the account settings, terms of use, policy procedures, and sign out because you're into a sign in account which is obviously billable. But when you go into an essay, you get the, the writing view. At the top left, you can rename the essay or file. And then on the left-hand side, you have these four sections which are explained in the essay guide, which goes through the sections or processes that Jordan Peterson suggests you go through when writing an essay. And at the top on the other side, you can make a copy of the essay, which isn't necessarily needed with the versioning, which I'll go through later. Export, which is just a normal export. And then you can share it because it's cloud-based. So you can share the essay for other people to edit or have a look at. For this essay, I've just written out all of the points I want to cover, so I'm going to go through, and my initial thoughts, this is an outline block, and my initial thoughts is, it looks cool, it looks good, there's no dark mode yet, that's on the roadmap, there is simple onboarding, once you've created the essay, you just start writing in the field, you just start writing wherever you want, but as this is a beta app and early in development, there are lots of features that Obsidian and other writing tools have that this just doesn't have, and there are some quirky ways that this tool works at the moment. You can see in this left side panel, I'm in the outline section. So what it's got is it's got the outline blocks. If I collapse them all, I have my initial thoughts, the features, and then comparative thoughts because they are the outline sections I have. If I click here, it will then show me where that section is inside of the main document. So if I click on features, it will take me down to features and comparative thoughts will take me down there. What I like about this outline section is you have color separation. So if I ex expand these again, you can see green. This is the green outline. This is the blue outline. If we go all the way down, that's the purple outline. So I like the separation, the visual separation of what sections what. The collapsible outline is nice to see. You can also edit the title of the outline section inside of the outline panel, I guess you could say, not in the main text, which is nice. You can also, if you want to, drag and drop an outline section and it will change it inside the main text. So now we have the initial thoughts underneath all of the other information Then you can drag it back. And although you can't edit paragraphs or headings inside of this outline block, when you click on it, it will navigate you to the block so you know where you are. However, I don't like the double view. So I can see the same thing twice. I'm not a big fan of that because it actually keeps you where you are. So you saw it just moved me down. If I go up here and then click there, it takes me there. So there's no way to see different sections in the outline and then the essay. I have to be in the same place twice, which to me seems redundant. Outline topics can't be headings. So the plus button, when you click on the plus, gives you the option. You can have a paragraph, which is the text, an outline topic, or heading one, two, three. So there's only three headings, not six like an obsidian. And when you have an outline section, it will have the outline. But when you go into a heading, for example, you then, if you make that an outline, will only make a new outline block. You can't change a heading into an outline section. It's just not possible. And the reason this is annoying to me is it means that every time I want to have an outline for a section or a heading, I need to have an outline and then a heading block. So what I try to do is have like as, a, as an outline, outline as an outline, produce as an outline, rewrite, etc. But I didn't want each of these headings to be in the outline topic. But now when I'm going through, it's very hard to navigate to the reorder section of my like part. So actually using it as an outliner is quite difficult. On top of this, there's no way to collapse headings or collapse blocks or text or anything. So if I don't want to see this, I just want to see these two parts of this heading or this section, I have to view it. I can't not. So if, for example, I'm working on the outline and the rewrite and I don't want to see produce, I have to scroll past outline and produce. So for longer essays, for longer writing, I would need to scroll backwards and forwards because you can't have a split screen, which is just a pain, which emphasizes this point. I don't know what to put as an outline and what to put as a heading because they function so differently. Then moving down to the produce section, so in theory you've outlined everything you want to write about, now you're going to write it, you can see it's hidden that outline panel, and now I'm going up and down in just the writing text. So this is what you'd typically see when like Word or Google Docs or 
in my case, Obsidian, you wouldn't just see this, but you can if you wanted to. And what I like is it's great for just writing and for a, a focus-like mode because everything's hidden away, which again, you can do in most writing apps now. But I can't move lines up and down as easily. So in Obsidian, for example, I'd use control and then up or down with my arrow key. Well, that, that just moves the cursor. So what I'd need to do in here is push tab, then arrow across to down, and then push enter to move the line down. And then if I wanted to move it back up, I'd need to arrow left twice and then push enter to go up. It's, it's just clunky. Text is also treated as blocks. So when Notion was just block editing, that's what this is like. Notion now has the ability to highlight different text, but you can see if I want to highlight this and then just the beginning of the, I, I can't highlight just hotkeys. It has to be the entire blocks, which is kind of a pain. And you can't even move the blocks. Like you can't click and drag them up and down. You have to go through the whole tab thing up and, so they're like the bad parts of the Notion block interface. <laughs> there is also only simple hotkeys. So if I wanted to put bold, yes, I can use control B or italics control I, but I can't underline anything and I can't do anything with markdown. So I can't add a heading. I can't go slash heading or slash bullet or slash anything because it's not possible. And I can't use markdown either because it's just text. So you can't hotkey your way through the text either. And this point is certainly specific to my use in Obsidian because I can't have split screens or tabs or windows or anything like that. So I've just copied and pasted that script from SA into just a, an example Obsidian file. And you can see we've got the outline plugin. I can navigate up and down. I can move things up and down, reorder them the way I want. And I can then add a heading wherever I want. So let's add a heading for in here and I didn't have to go anywhere and when I want to move a line I can use the arrow keys up and down drag lines up and down uh, I just dragged empty lines but I can reorder them very quickly very easily which I can't do in essay which is annoying uh, and then when it comes to the hotkeys well if I want to outline text I can move that text up here or if I want to move this text I don't know why but I'd move that down here I can do that with just dragging dropping and the hotkeys again like you control B control I and then if you want to do tasks you can add a task in there as well maybe a, something you need to do in the future add a footnote all of that's doable quickly which in essay you can't do yet and then when we consider all the split screens i could be in the like section of this page and when i come over here i want to be in the versioning of this page i can be in different sections of the same page i can have a tab for my research up here and essay is just you, you can't do any of that. But that is just the first two sections, outline and produce. If we move down to the rewrite section, this is where I think SA has a bit of uniqueness to the way the app works. If I click on a paragraph block, it will take me to the block in the text, but it will then give me the option to rewrite this section. So I can add some words in. Now it's rewritten that inside of the text and I can choose which one I want to use. So if you want to rewrite something, refine something or test out something to see if it works, you can go backwards and forwards and add as many options as you want. The three dots of the paragraph takes you either to the reorder section, which is the next section down. You can remove empty or identical rewrites. So just writing and just writing, that's identical. So if I click on this, you can see it's removed that rewrite and then I can just delete the sentence that I'm currently on. If I go to the top, I can remove remove unselected rewrites. So all of those rewrites I may have done throughout the page, I can remove them all, or I can show ones that I've just rewritten. So in this case, I've got the looks cool and that's the only thing that I've written. I have no idea where that is. Oh, it's at the top apparently. Yeah. And it looks pretty or it looks nice or it looks cool. And yeah, you can change it around. However, one of the more annoying things as someone that's constantly going through is if I click on this bit, it re moves me every time, like the smallest movements. So if I'm in here and I scroll up and go, oh, where's that? It moves me all the way up. And I'm like, no, I want to come back down. It's just annoying when you're editing something over here or editing something in here and it just jumps you. Even the smallest movements here is just really disorientating. I don't know why, but it, I don't like it. It's clunky. You may like it, but it's not for me. And the other thing that's kind of irritating is when I scroll up and down, I can't see how many rewrites there are or if there are rewrites. I have to filter it. And even when you come into this view, there's no number to say how many there are. You actually have to click and see how many there are, which is just irritating. It's another friction point of me having to click everywhere to see what's going on. If I come back to Obsidian very quickly, you can see I've got a number here for all of the backlinks, which don't exist in essay, but you've got a number next to it. So something like that would be useful. And then you can open it and see exactly where all of those things are, or all of the, I guess, rewrites would be just something like this would be useful. And then inside the page using Strange New Worlds, a great plugin as well by TFT Hacker. Uh, but this, again, you can see the links inside of the page and you can go through and go, oh, yeah, there's 100 why is there 102 linked to that? And you can go through them. I know this is extensive, but this is what my research looks like. Inside of Essay, I, I need to click into everything to see what's going on, and it's just 
too many clicks. And now we can move on to the reorder section. And the reorder section I don't quite get because you can do all of this inside of just the edit window or anywhere else. But um, what this allows you to do is what it says, reorder blocks. I like the outline, it looks good, but looks of no real use unless it functions in the middle. And in the middle. I don't want it at the bottom. I want it in I want it in the middle. There we go. Yes. There we go. See, it's just small things like that that yeah, the drag and drop's great, but it doesn't function the way I want it to. Uh, then when we click on the three dots, you can rewrite the sentence, so you can go backwards in time. But again, I would just rewrite it in here. I don't know why I'd need to go backwards and forwards. It, to me, it adds a constraint to writing. I just want to be able to do this. I don't want to have to click backwards and forwards to rewrite stuff. I just want to click in here and reword. I don't want to click there, there, and then try and find it, and now rewrite it, and then go back to reorder. And now I can... Too many clicks. And something that's very confusing is you can reorder paragraphs, sort of, <laughs> uh, but you can't reorder headings. So if you have an entire section, a heading section that you want to reorder, well, you can't do it in outline because it's not an outline and you can't do it in reorder. So headings are essentially redundant. They don't do anything apart from look bigger and you can't even sort of rework or what's it called? Rewrite a heading. You have to go in and write it. So headings are literally just visual blocks. Moving over to the settings, so you can see we can open up the settings. There are some nice features in here, which I haven't explored Obsidian enough to see if there's a community plugin. And if there isn't, a uh, developer make one. I'm sure it'll take you like a couple of days. So now I've put my Obsidian community plugin request in. We have words, page, and character count, which is already automatic inside of Obsidian. But then you have a word count goal, and that's what you're seeing sort of down here. So if I had a number in here, I still have the word count down the bottom, but now I have a percentage showing of how close I am to that word count. So for S writing if you have 4,000 words there's your word count limit you can then hide show only the progress bar the word count or anything like that and this is the sort of thing that I don't know if you could do in obsidian yet but if you can't I would imagine someone can make a plugin for with the copy selected sentence at the moment it's not showing the sentence if I come down here it's now going to copy the sentence so I can reword it uh, and then when I go up you can see it's now copied if I turn this setting off now when I go into something into a paragraph it's not going to have anything there it's just a blank text of rewriting whatever that paragraph is and this one gives you a warning just to make sure that you don't delete something that you don't want to delete when you're rewriting you can turn off the colors of the outline section why you'd want to do that i'm not really sure because i think it's one of the most uh, useful parts of the outline and then there are a couple of display settings so you can change the font no font that allows you to make arrows yet unfortunately so when i come down here uh, yeah it's, it's not an arrow whereas inside of obsidian you can see i can add a font to any section and there's literally any font you want uh, here <laughs> and you can import fonts as well as long as they're on the PC you can put them in so I can actually get some arrows inside of my essay writing no I'm not going to put it in the actual manuscript but it helps me when I'm working through ideas font size is a, a click and that's it done it's been set the same with the line spacing and the paragraph indentation paragraph indentation in obsidian is the same line spacing again is the same but font size in obsidian if I hold control on my keyboard and zoom in and zoom out uh, it changes it for me. So if I do want to zoom into something, I can. If I want to zoom out again, I can. If I just want a, a big overview of stuff, I can go through like this rather than having to go in, change the settings or anything like that. Now, the versioning inside of SA is also really nice. So you can see I'm in the versioning tab. I can create a version. And what that does is create a manually created version. And when I click on this, I can rename it here. So now I have a draft one version. Now, when I go back, you can see I can show named versions. There's draft one, or I can just show all of them. But as I'm sure you can guess right now, if I go into right click and then either go into view sync version history, this is the, the sync history. I can then show the differences. So any changes that I've made, any changes that I made here, this is for sync. You could do this for file recovery. If you don't use Obsidian Sync, if you use Git, you can use all of the versions there, have draft one, draft two, draft three, different branches. There are loads of options. I know this sounds like a bit of a moany video, but it's an appreciation for Obsidian and the work that they do and the features that they have, but also some constructive criticism from my own personal experience using SA, having used something like Obsidian. And here are a couple of other uh, tweaks that I would make. So not being able to change the block type. So this is currently a paragraph. If I want to change this to a heading, it's only going to add a heading. It doesn't actually change the block. So I'd have to like cut and paste it into whatever block I want it to be, which is a pain. There are limited block types. So for example, inside of most other applications like Notion, RemNote, Rome Research, Obsidian, of course, you have bullet points, lists. Uh, there's also no images in here. You can't highlight anything. There's no footnotes and there's no internal or external linking either. So those sorts of things in other 
PKM tools, note-taking tools, essay writing tools, tools for thought, whatever words you want to use, um, these are fairly standard in the writing world, <laughs> um, but they're not in this app yet. I assume it's on the roadmap. This isn't markdown, so there are no markdown options. Notion has markdown in the background, so for example, if you push hash and then space, it then gives you a heading. Notion does that, and even though most Notion users don't grasp markdown, it's still available. Obsidian is full markdown, which I'm very used to, so that's something that isn't there whether it's just a slash command to add a heading, it's not there. The arrow keys going up and down blocks is also irritating. So if, for example, I'm in the middle of a sentence and I want to go to the middle of the next sentence, I push arrow, it goes to the start of the block and then the end of the block and then the start of the block. It doesn't actually take me into the sentence. So the, the line goes all over the place and it's just disorientating. It doesn't do what I would expect arrow keys to do in a word processor. As someone that uses Grammarly, you can see some of the words that I use from academia. Grammarly is like, hey, what's that? That's not a word and then gets rid of it. So having my own dictionary inside of Obsidian means that if I use a word that Grammarly isn't familiar with, it doesn't matter. And I don't actually use Grammarly inside of Obsidian because I have spell checking in there already, whereas this doesn't have its own dictionary, so I just get red lines everywhere. The delete button is probably a bug, but I figured I'd put it in the video. So if I push backspace, it takes me back. But if I push delete, it doesn't get rid of the lines underneath. I have to click down and then backspace those lines. I think it's a bug. I'm not sure. And because this application is cloud-based, there is no offline mode. I know they're working on it at the moment, but there's no offline mode, which is what I use all the time because uh, when the internet goes down or when I want to get off of the internet, I can still use Obsidian perfectly fine. And this is very similar with the cloud stored there's the backup is all cloud you'd have to make your own backup and for me i use git and that's automatic so it automatically pushes a back backup to github and i also have them stored on my local files and then i can have any backups that i want unlike this where it's all cloud saved so you have to rely on the service now when comparing obsidian the tool i use an essay which is meant to be specifically for essays obsidian has more established tools more features and it's just better in my opinion but i think that's because of the development uh, life cycle and lifespan of the tool so i'm expecting essay to to catch up at some point maybe uh, but what's surprising is there's no reference integrations. So Obsidian has Zotero integration. So you can bring in your references, your footnotes and things like that from academic articles. And this is essay. So this is for writing essays. And essays normally have references from academia, which is where uh, Jordan Peterson's work comes from. The, the essay guide is about academic writing and you can't have references in here. So how would you work on an essay without references inside of the essay? I don't know, I've never tried it, <laughs> uh, but I could imagine that'd be kind of irritating. The sharing options in SA is easier than Obsidian, unless you're somewhat tech savvy, in which case just use Obsidian, because you can use Collaborative Sync, use GitHub, use VS Code as a live sync, or you could just share the markdown files, you could export it as a PDF. There are loads of options, you just require a little bit of understanding of how the tool works. My one question about the sharing availabilities of essay is plagiarism. Just just like a, a, a side worry as students, if you're sharing essays with another student, they could just copy your work and then obviously plagiarism is a big issue. So I personally as a student never shared my work. So even though it's a nice feature, I don't know who you'd share it with apart from your professor, lecturer, whoever's in charge, but then I would imagine they'd need to understand how to use this tool, and no offense to uh, lecturers and professors, but mine hardly understood words, so how they'd grasp this, <laughs> I'm not too sure. And now looking at the roadmap, you can see dark mode is planned, but not there. PDF export doesn't quite exist. They're working on the offline mode. Templates don't exist yet. Paragraph alignment. And there are loads of other things that they're working on, which is nice to see as a beta application. But I can imagine this getting much larger. <laughs> I mean, they've got 73 requests. I think Obsidian have over a thousand. Uh, I know Notion have over like 10,000 clickups the same. So um, they it's nice that they have the roadmap. I like the roadmap, but seeing some of these things on here, like dark mode, PDF export, and working offline as a beta app, it for me, I wouldn't switch now, and I don't think I'll switch in the future either, but it's nice to see their roadmap is public, public facing, and you can see what they're working on. Yes, this is a very critical video of the SA app, but I wanted to be as honest and as open about my use, my first time experience using the SA app and comparing it to something that I'm already using. Some This may suit someone, this may be perfect for someone's use because they don't understand Obsidian or they don't want to use Obsidian or a variety of other reasons. But for me, as someone that writes a lot, that researches a lot, there's not enough features in it for me right now.